how do you defeat a seemingly immortal enemy? You knock them down, they get back up. You cut them to pieces, they put themselves back together. You blow them up, and they just keep healing. But what or who is responsible for this? All the hints lie with the five elder planets, or the five elder demons who hold packs with Eam, the first successful user of dark magic in the world of One Piece. But how, you might ask, did I come to this conclusion? At this point, I think it's common speculation that Emu's name is spelled in reverse as Umi or Umibozu, a giant black humanoid figure of a yokai in Japanese folklore, which would be par for the course with what we witness in the throne room during Sabo's flashback during the reverie, where from the throne came this gigantic looking creature climbing down and the tail that lashed out at Sabo and King Nefertari Cobra resembling something demonic. Now for those of you who aren't too familiar with what a umibozu is or just Japanese folklore in general, umibozus often appear and disappear at night in the oceans, destroying ships in their wake. And it's because of this form that Eam takes that makes me think of other forms of media where warlocks with magic that tie them to demons or the underworld are able to take on demonic figures as a sort of metamorphosis. Most significantly in things like World of Warcraft or Dungeons and Dragons, where warlocks gain the ability to transform into a larger humanoid demonic creature with wings and horns. And while of course it's not a one-to-one -one for what we see in the Sabo flashback, the idea is the same. Now, I don't think Oda is rolling d20s every weekend or logging in for the raid lockouts with his editors. I think there is some degree of inspiration that he has taken from these forms of media for Eames' abilities. Because how many of you remember the Herahitania people that thought they summoned the devil when Brooke showed up after Sabaudi? Herahitania is a kingdom known as the Land of Poverty that hosts a Satan-worshipping tribe run by Pekori. The only way they would have been able to do so, if successful, would be with dark magic. The same kind of magic that we saw successfully used in Egghead to summon Saint Saturn and the other Gorsei to the battle from Marijua. There's also the fact that in Romance Dawn version 2, the villain Shapil was actually a magician. He could fly around on a broomstick, he could set people ablaze, lift them with telekinesis, and summon weapons and even control water to sink his own ship, apparently. Yeah. And while this of course isn't canon to the story of One Piece as we know right now, this along with the Hare Hatania people show us that Oda has had magic on his mind ready to introduce into the story of One Piece. Yes, Stormy? Hello? Though the abilities shown to us by Shupil are nothing to really make us shiver in our boots compared to what we see now in the story, the door that's been opened with those kinds of abilities show us the possibilities of what Eam would be able to do once they get introduced into the story fully. So to speak more on Eam's abilities, as a warlock, there come many facets of powers available to them. One of the most notable is the ability to make pacts with otherworldly patrons. The beings that serve as patrons for warlocks are mighty inhabitants of other planes of existence. Not gods necessarily, but godlike in their powers. Various patrons give their warlocks access to different powers and invocations. Some of these patrons include fiends from a lower plane of existence whose aims are typically evil, such as ruling over the world government and the celestial dragons who tyrannize the rest of the world. Aside from the ability to make pacts with demons, there hasn't been any hint of Eames' other possible abilities at this time, so while I can dive into different things like spells and incantations, that warlocks can use from forms of media like World of Warcraft or Dungeons and Dragons, like Eldritch Invocations, like Eldritch, Eldritch Invocations, that's hard, that's a rough word to say, or Levitating Oneself, or I have the Rune Keeper for my D20 nerds here, which allows you to read all writing, thus allowing Eam to be able to read the Poneglyphs and know the true history, well, know the true history of the world as if they didn't already know. But I think it's best to just keep that part speculation for now. Now, to expand on the five elder demons and their relationship to Eam, I think it's important to try to understand what Eam's relation is to the five elders and how that relation could give us more insight into what their true power is, or at the very least, a certain degree of what their powers are. When we saw Sabo in the throne room during his Holy Land invasion, shout out to a few good lads, he used Fire Fist to try to take out the Gorsei and then rock check at Eam themselves, and they just seemingly brushed the attacks off. Now, when it comes to Western religion and forms of media like D&D and World of Warcraft, one of the staples surrounding 
defeating or banishing demons in those is that they can't truly be defeated unless they are in the plane of existence in which they originate from. This requirement for defeating demons is even further supported from seeing Saint Saturn's ominous comments about how long it's been since he's been on the surface. And then in the battle with the Straw Hats, and how every attack they take just seems to be brushed off and the damage disappearing from them. As someone who's a demon that can't be defeated outside of their own plane of existence, then it's little wonder as to why they seemingly aren't being injured in these scuffles. You might ask then, well, okay, Wrath, how are the Straw Hats going to defeat them if they can't be truly harmed? Because of this aspect, I think that the only way they're really going to be defeated is with Eam themselves being defeated and thus severing the ties they have to the surface world's plane of existence. Without the warlock who they hold a pact with alive, they would be forced to return to hell or the underworld. This is going to force the other straw hats into a sort of battle of attrition with them while Luffy fights against Eam, or Luffy and Sabo fight against Eam, or Luffy and Sabo and Dragon fight against Eam, whatever combination of the three that Oda decides to use for their battle against the world government. Another big thing that comes to mind when thinking about all this is the Phantom Room in Pangaea Castle in the Holy Land. We all know that scene where Eam walks up to one of the vaults and reveals the giant straw hat, but what else could be down there? What if in one of the vaults is a magic gateway or something like a lure or beacon for each of the five elder demons to have been summoned from? A grimoire or a powerful ritual foci. In order to keep these in utmost secrecy, they've been locked away in each of those vaults. So many hints throughout Sabo's flashback and the five elders being transported to Egghead through the magic summoning circles are pointing to not only the elders being demons, but Eam being the one who holds a pact with them. Questions still remain, like what did Eam offer up in order to form a pact with them? Could it have been someone or something from the ancient kingdom? Hopefully as Egghead comes to a close and the next arc looms in the distance, we're able to get those answers, especially with Vegapunk starting his broadcast and divulging a lot of very big lore drops. But until then, give me your thoughts on the matter. What is your theory on the origin of the Five Elders in Eam? I know that there are a lot out there, but I'd like to hear them from you guys. And if you enjoyed the theory, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more One Piece theories and reviews. I also go live on twitch.tv slash Wrath of Reptar, where we talk about One Piece as well as play a lot of games together with viewers. So you can always come hang out and watch me struggle as I climb in League. And we could talk theories and our opinions on One Piece or any other manga that you have. That being said, I'm looking forward to the next chapter and I will see you all in the next video. Have a wonderful night.